Hey everyone, welcome back to What's In My Bag. My name's Ian Miller. Today I'm gonna to show you how I pack my Shibota Explorer 60. And in this particular case, I'm using the starter kit configuration, which comes with two small core units. This summer I've been using the Explorer 60 a bit more because it's a lighter pack, but also because it's a simpler pack. It doesn't have all the extra attachments for uh, technical climbing gear or backcountry ski gear or similar items to that. Uh, it's a simpler product and again, it's a little bit lighter. The other reason is because we are actually having a sale on this product right now. Today is August 25th, 2020. If you're watching this in a couple of months time from then, you know, check our website to see if it's actually still on sale. This video does not guarantee this product is on sale for eternity. So it's 30% off, which for the kid is about, I think $125 savings. Because we started that sale, I've, um, I've just been kind of reminded of how much I actually like the Explore 60. I have been using it, been taking a bunch of photos with the bag, but also just of the surrounding landscapes. Been flying my new drone with it. A small thing to note here is that because I'm filming on this camera and that camera, I'm missing some lenses and body. So I will substitute one of the bodies with this much smaller body. And I don't actually have a substitute for my ultra wide, so we'll just deal with that as it is. Okay, so let's get started here. First, you can see a whole bunch of products here. This is all, I guess, the hardware side of things. Uh, we've got a battery charger, joystick for the drone, charging cables, 24 to 70, which is the lens that I use the most, uh, 70 to 200, three snack bars. I've got a plastic bag with just some basic, I guess you can call these health aids, uh, bandages, uh, sleeping pills, water tablets, lighter. This plastic bag, I've got a sensor cleaner, another lens cloth, some spare propellers, and maybe some wire. Here here I've got my uh, flip-on glasses. Uh, we've got a Shimoda accessory pouch, which uh, some days I'll just keep the same stuff in here. Other times it'll change throughout the day, depending what I want quick access to. Uh, I've got a spare battery for the A7 III. I've got a card wallet, a body that's actually an A7 III, which I'm filming on there. I've got my remote controls. I've got two batteries for the Skydio drone. If I'm in a hut overnight, I bring the power charger, which are these two items. I've got the beacon for the Skydio 2, which allows really exceptional tracking. Basically, the drone will just fly itself and will follow that beacon signal. I've got filters for that. I've got a pass here that just lets me get up the mountain for free within my local community. I've got my sunscreen, my uh, sun block for the lips. I got some wireless mics. I've got the road cables. If I want to record audio onto my smartphone, of course, you need this uh, the three pin version. I've got my mobile phone, which is a Sony Xperia 1 Mark II. I just got this. You'll notice it's quite tall. Uh, of course, I got a face mask, which I have to pack just to uh, go through the lift network. And then I've got a, this is a liter and a half of water. It's a platypus bladder. So if you're not familiar with platypus, once these are empty, they just roll up really small. And at the same time, they're a much lower profile than a lot of water bottles, at least. Say I have a 500 milliliter Nalgene bottle Bottle, which I will use sometimes, but I much prefer these because this I can pack into so many more places and the more I drink, you know, the smaller this thing gets. So it just uh, gets out of the way. I also have this Hydra pack, which I'll put in the front pocket. This is also soft, so it compresses much smaller. You know, the key here is that once this is empty, I'll just top this up. Depending on how much gear is in my bag, I might have this on the outside or I might have it packed in my actual bag. When the time comes, I'll just refill this. So I've got a Mi Photo Backpacker S uh, tripod, super lightweight, 0.91 kilograms, I believe. I've got a rain cover. I've also got a core unit uh, skin. This is for the small size. And the reason I bring this is because this tripod is so light. And sometimes when I'm in the Alpine, I'm dealing with a lot of wind. I'll just hook this down below and that will weigh down the tripod quite a bit. This works exceptionally well. And it also, of course, just stabilizes your image. So I also use a stuff sack kit. I've got two sizes with me, and this has the potential to end up being a stinky clothes bag. And I've also got one of these, uh, I guess they're called Gorilla Pods. Uh, I don't necessarily bring this all the time, but sometimes I do. So next we have a hat, which I'll end up wearing most of the time. 
I've got another smaller stuff sack kit, uh, socks, underwear, and a small towel. One thing I am missing from here is I have a sunshade that basically is just touched to a cord. It's just like a curtain for the back of my neck and I can just kind of alter it. And that really helps because I do most of my hiking during the midday when it's going to be its hottest so that I can shoot at the nicer hours. Uh, I have a hard shell which is a made by a company called Teton Bros, a brand I'm lucky enough to work with. Uh, these guys make beautiful gear, ultra light, high quality. I also carry a pair of their pants. These are hiking pants, all tech gear, dries quick. And then I have another jacket from them and this is, uh, they call this uh, Run With Alpha but it's, in my opinion, it's kind of like a, a summer down jacket where it doesn't have the hard shell material, so it breathes really well. So this portion, which is the front of the jacket, has a light lining inside, and then this is like a, a very thin, soft, breathable material here, and then here is basically the shell of the front, but it's not lined. So this is your back, and you have all this breathability of air coming in here, and this is thin. So if you're a guy who wears a heavy backpack or any backpack at all, you don't have the, uh, the extra warmth on your back because your backpack's gonna give you that warmth. And so for summer, it's perfect. Of course, it dries quick, all that kind of stuff. Lightweight and it packs up really small. So I've used this uh, case, which is the hard case for the Skydio 2 drone. Now you can use this or you could pack it in a medium core unit, but in my case it depends on how much camera gear I'm going to bring. Because the medium core unit takes up a good chunk of space in your pack, uh, bringing your other camera gear, uh, you're going to have to compromise on that. So I'm leaving the drone in the case for now and I'm putting it either into the front pocket or into the top of the Explorer 60. And that's actually worked out quite well so far. And the last thing is, and we're gonna start with this uh, small accessory pouch, is I will organize some of this gear into here so I have it easy to access uh, when I need it. So let's just start with the audio kit. I'm gonna pack the audio kit into here, into this top sleeve. I will try and keep it all within the same area and not put other items in there. I've got extra dead cat too just in case I lose the other one. So I will close that up. And next, cause I'm not gonna use my Skydio charger until I get to a hut that hopefully has power. I'm gonna put that in there. And I'm gonna throw all these charger cables in here as well. I've also got some Allen keys for my tripod plates. And then I will put my backup battery in there. Honestly, in a day's time, I don't go through this much power. The old batteries though used to go through a handful. And then I'll put uh, a couple of Ziploc bags here. I'm gonna stash those in there as well, just to keep it out of the way. Okay, so we've got this all packed up now. Now I'm gonna put in the camera gear. Uh, I've preloaded the core units, so you'll see one here. It'll be for rear access, and then this will be for, for side access. So in the rear, I'm also going to put this divider pocket which uh, is perfect for my remotes. This is the mirrorless size. Uh, I can just put my remotes in just like this. And I'm gonna put that in right here, you can see. So once I put my 70 to 200 in, that'll sit in just like that. And then just for now, I'm gonna close it off. And I will open the side access. And you can now see you've got uh, this opening. I will construct 24 to 70 with this stand-in body right now. Uh, and then normally down here, I would put the wide angle lens, close that off. So now I'm gonna pack up the drone, which goes in here. It's got this nice little case. It's a bit weighty to be honest, but otherwise it's definitely a lot of protection. I feel like it's almost overdoing it, but I can imagine why people want this level of protection with a drone like this. So I will close that up now. And then I'm going to show you two ways you can do this. You can easily just put it in the top like this, 
and it fits in there rather well. It goes right up to the top of the frame. It's actually just about a couple cm lower than the top of the frame and it's basically the same width as the bag. So once you fill this out with clothes or whatever other gear you wanna put in here, it will take a much nicer shape. Uh, the other option is to put it right in the front panel. So because this front pocket is so big, you can basically just drop the Skydio 2 in like that and you've still got quite a bit of room up here. I mean, we're probably about six inches room up there still. You can do two things here. You can keep the strap tight so it sits at a certain height or you can let it slide down all the way to the base. Now you can put clothes that you know you're not gonna use maybe until later in the bottom. So I'm just gonna take my pants because I know I'm not gonna be wearing those because I will be hiking in my shorts. I'm gonna put those in the bottom now. My shell I want to keep access to and I also want access to my warmer jacket. My socks and underwear change. I don't need access to those. So as you can see, we've still got a lot of space left. This pocket's not even used yet. This whole top compartment's not used yet either. So we definitely have a lot of room here. Uh, I'm gonna take my stinky bag and I'm gonna throw this gear in there for now. The hat will actually stay on my head, but let's just put it in there for now too. So I'm gonna drop that in the top compartment. I'll be hiking in weather that I've checked the forecast ahead of time. So if I thought it was gonna rain, I would definitely put the shell in this pocket here. So we've got three energy bars and we're gonna put those and there's two, there's two back pockets here. And then we have some Skydio tools, which I'm going to put right here because I want access to these when I'm flying. And I'm gonna take this water bladder and I'm gonna put it also in the top compartment here. And I'm gonna position it so it's actually against my back, not uh, weighted onto the outside. I got an anchor battery here, but I'm also gonna put in the sub sleeve here. And then I am going to zip this up, move to the top compartment, unzip this pocket here. And I'm gonna start putting uh, some items here. I'm gonna throw this lens cap in here. I got my, this will likely just be haste that's going in here. My mask. Yeah, these are items I'm gonna need access to at one point, but probably just gonna need access once or twice during my journey. I'm gonna also put my card wallet in there because again, i would probably not gonna be changing cards at any point. I should throw my pass in there because I will need quick access to that. I'm gonna take my small accessory case, put that in there. I do have this controller and I've only brought this a couple of times just as a safety precaution while I'm learning to fly this particular drone. It's easy to fly, but it's also, since it's new and it's got all this AI technology, I'm kind of afraid it's gonna fly away on me. So for now, I'm just gonna put it right here. We're gonna close that off. Cure these straps down. So let's get that up here. This is, again, a very tall phone and this actually fits in here quite well. So that's the Xperia 1 Mark II inside the, the foam pocket. I will take my hydration, put it in there. I will run it through the outer loop here. So I'm gonna put the accessory pouch on my belt here. That just slides on. Now you wanna make sure that it starts way back so it doesn't uh, encourage itself to slip forward. Just a little bit of uh, extra security if that's what you need. Take your whatever it is you have and just put it in this pocket. This in my case is sunscreen and chapstick and that's gonna prevent that from moving anywhere. Now I'm also a big fan of these uh, salt tablets. They're basically lemon candies with a bunch of salt in the inside. Uh, I eat these quite a bit, especially in the hot months. So I'll put those in there. And then on the outside here, we'll pull out the tripod pocket. And again, this is one of those tripods that goes like this. But when you do that, you compact the area to a smaller uh, space. I like to leave it uh, taller so the way it's distributed over uh, a bigger area. And I'll also throw this little mini in here. And we'll just tighten that pull the cable out and I will make sure that this secures this down. 
so that's nicely in place. So there we go, we got the tripods, two tripods in there. Now I'm gonna lay this down and I'm gonna show you something that I personally do, or not so much with this core unit system, but uh, a lot of times you will have a core unit open like this and maybe sometimes your gear isn't as deep as the core unit is and you have a little bit of extra depth here. One thing you can do to do that is if you have a rain cover, uh, uh, in this case a skin, works as well. I'll actually take the rain cover out of its pouch and then I will stuff it in here and the same with the skin. So you can see it's kind of created a puffy, uh, it's kind of puffed out the exterior and now when you push it down that exterior is going to help fill some of the gaps that might be there. You definitely don't have to do that but if you want something to help uh, influence your gear steering in place if it's an issue with your particular setup then you could try that out that's gonna be it that's my explore 60 setup how I've been using it this summer I don't always pack the 70 to 200 I don't always pack the ultra wide all of the time I almost use my 24 to 70 and I feel like I just carry those other two lenses just for the sake of it I do use them sometimes but very rarely do I get images that I really like those lenses I just like that 24 to 70 which is strange because before when I shot action sports uh, only I only used a fisheye and a 70 to 200 I did not like that mid-range zoom but now it's all I use so go figure so that's the Explore 60 how I'm using it and you've seen everything that's in the bag and again directly from our US website it's 30% off right now dealers in the US also have that sale if you are in the US and want to take advantage of that by all means pick up an Explore 60 still one of my favorite Shimoda bags and I uh, hope that it helps any of you uh, get some ideas for how to pack your bag whether it's the Explore 60 or another pack it's always good to see how everyone's packing and get some new ideas so that's it for this what's in my bag episode sorry it dragged on a little bit long but don't forget that adventure photography makes beer taste better so get yourself a bag get yourself out there and then grab yourself a beer we'll see you next time bye bye